What's going on guys? I know it's been a while since I made a tutorial. Uh, we just moved houses and we have a little youngin, uh, so it's been taking a lot of our time, but I'm trying to get back into the swing of making content again. I've been getting some questions on Instagram lately about filling out uh, all the sound in the lo-fi uh, track. And so I'm just gonna pull up some of the ones I've done recently. I'm gonna pull up a chill trap beat and then a lo-fi track and just show you a few tips that I use on every track that I do. Uh, that I think always come in handy and that might help you uh, get up like a fuller track when you're done. If you have any questions or have some other stuff you want to see content on, drop it in the comments or you can message me on Instagram and I can get back to you a lot faster on there. But for now, let's go into the computer and I'll show you some stuff. Okay, so this is the chill trap song. And the first thing we want to talk about is like having these like ambient noises in a lot of tracks. I mean, I put it in everything if it's trap, lo-fi, uh, it doesn't really matter. I put it in a lot because I feel like it always adds to it. And it was honestly something I saw uh, Kenny Beats doing and some other people doing. And I've, I never put a lot of um, just noises into the track. So I started doing it and it really just kind of made it a whole lot of difference. So, uh, so this track right here, it's got like, it's got birds, um, uh, vinyl dust going, this like, texture noise so yeah to me it just kind of like instead of it being like a dry beat or like you know just like a like a stock beat it kind of feels like you're immersed in, in this kind of like whole vibe of a track so you can add whatever you think sounds good i mean i've put like crowd noises um in before and, and like you know birds in this one but normally you know like lo-fi there's a lot of like rain or dust or like scratch noises and stuff in there um and you can add all that stuff in or like hiss from a cassette tape all that kind of stuff just trying to like add texture add layers uh to the track all right, so I'm going to jump into the lo-fi track now and show you the rest of the stuff that's in this one. All right, tip number two, um, and I, you know a lot of people will know this already, so this is kind of like a beginner level one. Uh, for me, all the noises, all the texture layers, uh, the main like piano, guitar, the, whatever the loop is that the main one is, always sidechain that to the kick. Um, and it's important for a lot of genres, but especially for lo-fi. Uh, it kind of like lets the kick sit right on top and it gives that pump feel. But a lo lot of lo-fi songs are overly done and it's become like part of this, like the total sound of that genre now. Um, but I'm going to show you what it sounds like right here. So I'm just going to pull up the piano. This is the compressor. Uh, you just side chain it turn the side chain on, put it on the drum rack, and then I have it on the kick. Or if you're doing like pulling samples in, just put it on that track. And I have it turned down a whole lot. So this is what it sounds like whenever the kick hits. You can just hear it drop in and out. Uh, but that always lets it sit like right up there. Tip number three is actually a plug-in recommendation. Um, if you make lo-fi or chill uh, trap or anything like that in that genre of that like relaxed genre, you probably already know about this, but it's sketch cassette. Uh, I'm just going to drop it on this piano part up here. Always turn the hiss. I always turn the hiss all the way down. Um, but you can listen here. I'll play and you can just hear what it sounds like. So, you know, it's supposed to emulate like a, like you're running it through like cassette tape, but um, it always gives it that like warmer feel and you can add the hiss in. I just never do I always like have it separated out into another track. Uh, it seems like wildly unmanageable, um, but I always, you know, up the saturation, you know, put it on one of the used or worn depending on what it is, but I always put it on like the piano or the guitar stuff like that. You can try it for other things too. Sometimes like vocals, like if I'm trying to get real fucky with the vocals, put it on there too. So tip four is in the sampling and writing process. Um, a lot of people will, um, well, I've been just hearing people talk about this a lot lately, but you know, we'll chomp the sample, 
uh, you know, they're not clearing it. You're uploading it and they're pulling them and they're doing a lot more lately. Um, and I, I mean, I've even had some samples that got pulled lately. Um, but they're really coming down harsher on a lot of things now. Um, but you know, if you, if you're not, if you're sampling a lot of stuff, I mean, you have like a, a bunch of choices now. Um, you can, you know, go to splice if you're not writing a piano part, but you can go to splice. Um, you could like just refine it down to like lo-fi and get like a Rhodes piano or like a guitar part from there, or you can write them. Um, and if you don't know how to play piano, there's another great plugin, uh, Captain Chords. I'm going to try and do another video specifically on that one for lo-fi. Um, but if you don't know how to play piano and you're spending a bunch of time trying to find like a piano part, like a Rhodes part, um, then it might be a worthy investment because you can get Captain Chords, um, throw like a whole lot of like minor ninth chords, run it through uh, whatever your favorite lo-fi piano plugin is, and then boom, you're done. You throw Sketch Cassette on there and it sounds like a sample anyway. Um, but if you're kind of stuck in that, area too um i mean i i've put i like showed a sample on a youtube video of another song that we pulled into a track and they were like they they slapped all that stuff on that video too so you know if you're making lo-fi and you want that sample sound you can definitely achieve that um going a different route just captain chords a piano plug-in a sketch cassette it's gonna sound just the same too so I would say look more into that for the, the sampling process and the writing process. Um, and then there's tons of people on Instagram who will write parts. And in the caption, it also says like, you can use this and you can sample this and cause you know, it gets them views and stuff too. So um, I've done that. I mean, you can get on TikTok and look up guitarists or like ukulele players, something about ukulele players when they're like singing um, th that stuff translates really well into a lo-fi song. So I mean, get on TikTok, get on Instagram, look up these samples that way because those people are just trying to gain exposure. So if you just drop them in the video or like in the post whenever you post it, then like they don't care that you're using that sample. Whereas if you sample like a vinyl from forever ago, they're still getting kind of pissed off that you're using their stuff. Fifth tip, uh, I would say um, it's not really much in this track just because of how open the track was, but um layering percussion layering percussion is super important and it doesn't even have to be like so your main parts like kick hi-hat snare right you have those parts you can um like layer in these like percussive like noises whether it's like i mean like some snaps some like chain um shaker parts um all of these things like fill out that percussive element and there's a lot of a lot of space in lo-fi in general um and with like noises ambient noises percussive textures, stuff like that. You start to fill that space. Uh, you start to like thicken the track all the way back out. Um, and it's just more entertaining to listen to. And you can, and you can definitely like try different things out. Honestly, um, stolen drums, sample pack, shout out to stolen drums for the sample packs. The, like the I think it's called the drums that slap, but I mean like, you know, there's tons like bongos, um, these random percussion shakers, like all that kind of stuff. It's just like fills the track all the way back out. Um, so don't forget to add those parts in tambourine. Even that was the other thing I was trying to think of. Can't think of tambourine, but like tambourine, um, these shells, stuff like that. I mean, layering it, um, layering your snares, um, to try and like elongate the tone really. Um, any of that stuff too. So I'm going to pull up a file to try to like explain this in more depth. Okay. So here's the track. Finally found it. Um, so, uh, this one with a snare, I'm going to show you, I'm going to zoom in on this part. So I have this main hi-hat part. Um, and this is just like to explain like thickening parts up. There's a shaker also in the background. You're not going to be able to hear this. Um, and then with the snare, I added this roll to try to make it sound a little more like a human element to it. So the snare hit is just that. And then this little roll that's in front of it. Which, I mean, like, you know, taking this stuff off. Oh yeah, there's tambourine in there too. 
always trying to stay like behind the beat. So like, you know, if you left it at just like kick, snare, hi-hat and took off this extra roll. I mean, it, it's just kind of like, like leave something to be desired. So like trying to layer that part back out. So that would be the fifth tip layer percussion so i really hope that you got some value out of this content um i'm going to try and make more uh videos coming up about lo-fi uh chill trap and then i'm going to get back to doing the live streaming again uh making music i'm trying also to stay quiet because my daughter is asleep in the next room so i'm really hoping i don't wake her up with this but if you enjoyed it, please give a like, uh, subscribe. I'm going to start doing those vocal effect videos again and uh, hopefully do one tomorrow. We'll see. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.